So, uh, good morning, everyone. The matter that brings us here today is to be appraised about the state of the financial sector in Uganda. Um, in my presentation today, I'm largely going to focus on, uh, like uh, Kenneth indicated, just highlights and key, and, and, and key features of the state of the financial sector in Uganda. So I'll start with a summary of the key risks, an overview of the banking sector, performance of the payment systems. I shall provide an update on regulatory developments throughout the year or to date. And then give a synopsis in terms of outlook and policy implications. The first part we shall discuss here, or I shall present today, we first summary of the key risks within uh, to financial stability within the financial sector. Whilst there are very many, very many risks, I think here what we've done is that we focus on those that we think are pertinent and critical to understanding uh, financial sector stability. Overall risk, which is about systemic risk. Systemic risk is basically the, the risk of a co collapse or a risk to the wider financial system as opposed to individual uh, financial institutions has been, it remains moderate. And you'll notice that the, we, the, 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 the color is amber, which is moderate risk, and the direction is horizontal, meaning that it is kind of stable. On macro risk, we still have lower inflation uh, compared to our neighbors and other countries generally within the region. Yes. Um, for macro risks, again, they are moderate and stable, largely motivated by the, the low inflation that we're experiencing and relative, and I mean relative stability within the foreign exchange market. Liquidity and funding risk, this is for the financial institutions themselves. Uh, liquidity and funding conditions have improved partly uh, due to the continued wearing off of the of the tight monetary stance that Bank of Uganda has maintained since uh, the mid-2022. Uh, Credit risk, it's moderate, but potentially increasing. It continues, uh, credit growth continues to recover. Non-performing loans uh, to gross loans, has, the ratio has reduced. And the reduction in in, in NPLs is largely because the financial institutions have been a bit more prudent in how they provision and write off non-performing loans. Profitability, the in the aggregate, the capital buffers remain strong and resilient. And we will, down during the presentation, I'll provide a bit more detail on profitability, but broadly across the industry, it's actually grown year on year from December 2022 to December 2023. Market risk, again, the exchange rate, and the interest rates have largely remained stable. And structural risk, which is about the, 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 the level of concentration or concentration or competition power within the industry is good. When we look at the DCIPs, which is domestic systemically important banks, their share of banking assets has actually reduced from 61% to about 60%. Here are some of the composite indicators of systemic risk. To the left, you will notice that largely the percentage changes in the period from December 2018 to December 2023 have largely remained within um, a bound between um, minus five and, uh, and about 10. On the, se on the, on the right, the, the figure indicates the level of, of, uh, of, of systemic risk within the wider economy. Now, along the further there is seven dimensions of risk that we're looking at. Liquidity, profitability, market risk, credit risk, market risk, uh, structural risk. Those numbers indicate the risk level. So the higher the level, the higher the number, the higher the risk. If you will note, the dotted line 
is where we were at in December 2022. The, I don't know if that's yellow or orange, that yellow line, the, the yellow line now indicates where we're at as of December 2023. You'll notice that largely there has been a reduction in risk across all the major dimensions of risk that we concern ourselves about. The exception perhaps might be on credit risk, but even then, that is moderate. Turning to macrofinancial developments across the globe. Um, estimates by the IMF and the World Economic Forum, inflation globally is expected to fall from 5.8 to 4.4% in 2025, compared to the 9.2% that globally was experienced in 2022. Uh, financing conditions remain tight. Interest rates rose in advanced economies, and we have seen, as a consequence, an outflow, an expected outflow of funding from um, uh, EMDEs, emerging and developing economies. However, and that's in light blue, for Uganda, we've largely remained competitive, and total offshore investments have actually risen to 4.2 or 4, 4 trillion shillings in December 2023, which is an increase of 1.5% when we compare December to uh, September 2023, and 28% on a year-on-year -year basis. Um, on the most domestic developments, GDP grew by about 5.2% in the financial year 22-23, from the 4.6 that have been registered in 2021-22. And our projections at Bank of Uganda are that it will be 6% for 23-24 and 6.5% in 24-25. The financing conditions domestically remain stable. Following the slight easing of monetary policy, you notice we moved from a CBR of 10 to now 9.5. Core inflation has eased it's, uh, to 2.3% in December compared to 2.4% in September and 8.4% in December 2022. So on a year-on-year -year basis, inflation has actually dropped by, by almost 75%, from 8.4% to 2.3%. The exchange rate has remained relatively stable, with some marginal depreciation of 0.7% in the quarter ending December 2023, and year-on-year, -year, the depreciation has been 1.8%. So the aggregate banking sector assets on, in, on overall, have increased by 9.3% to 51.3 trillion in December 2023, compared to the 46.9% that was um, where, where the assets in the industry at the end of 2022. So the outlook or the implications of these, of these figures are that with improving global and domestic uh, economic growth and financial conditions, um, we expect support for financial positions of households, farms, and government leading to better sector performance. Funding and liquidity. As indicated earlier on in the key summary risks, liquidity and funding risk is moderate. It is unstable over the period and slightly supported by the increased holding of um, high quality liquid assets by the financial institutions. Wholesale and retail funding deposits rose by 1.3% uh, in, in the quarter ending December 2023. Funding costs, the average swap to CBR spread reduced from 2.7 to 1.22 over the quarter ending December. In the assessment of liquidity risk, uh, the, buffers, the liquidity buffers have improved. Aggregate liquidity coverage ratio, which is the, 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 the proportion of liquid assets a financial institution holds that enable it to cover 30 days of cash outflows, the aggregate has increased from, two, from 267% to 285% uh, on, a quarter, on a, a quarter basis. The, uh, because the, the prudential minimum is required is that we expect financial institutions to hold high, uh, high quality liquid assets that at a minimum can cover 30 days of their cash flows. So that's the minimum, uh, the, the prudential minimum is 
the aggregate liquid assets to deposits ratio increased from 44.4% to 45% as of December 2023. That was a marginal increment. Again, this is almost double the prudential minimum of 20%. So when you look at the action and outlook from Bank of Uganda's perspective, we have now started implementation of financial institutions liquidity regulations 2023, which will enhance the financial institution's ability to manage their liquidity and funding risk. And second, on a, from an outlook perspective, we expect recovery in economic growth and relative stability in the financial markets. And this, we hope, will imp further improve uh, the funding conditions and liquidity conditions within the market. Credit risk. Total loans um, on a total loans grew on a year on year basis by seven point eight percent by about one point five trillion shillings. Uh, this is higher than the five point four percent growth in the year year on year for September twenty twenty three. However, it is still remains lower than the 8.6 registered in, uh, as of December 2022. And I would just like to draw your attention to the, to the figure on the top right corner, which just, just gives an indication in terms of what's been happening, happening to credit growth over the period from when we compare year on year from 2018 to 2023. Uh, so credit growth largely, look, just looking at the long-term trend, it remains below the long-term trend, but not too significantly below. Asset quality has improved. The non-performing loans to gross loans ratio has reduced to 4.7% as of end of December 2023, compared to 5.4% registered in September 2023 and 5.3% as of December 2022. And again, like I indicated earlier on, this reduction is largely re, uh, reflected in um, the more prudential write-off and uh, provisioning for bad loans uh, that, that are in the sector. The implications, so this improvement in asset quality is expected to encourage or increase the appetite of financial institutions to continue lending. And of course, naturally, a Bank of Uganda as the financial sector regulator, we continue to engage these financial institutions to maintain this path or trajectory of prudent credit risk management and in the mobilization of, of adequate capital buffers to, uh, to absorb or to be able to be resilient to potential shocks to their capital. Capital adequacy and profitability. The, on the aggregate, capital buffers remain strong. Um, the capital adequacy ratios for banks stood at 25.3%, for credit institutions, 20.1%, and for MDIs at 33.2%, and which is well above the minimums of 10% for banks, 10% for credit institutions, and 15% for MDIs, respectively. Um, the capital conservation, the, the leverage ratio, which has a prudential minimum of 6%, and the capital conservation buffers uh, as a proportion of risk-weighted assets at 12.5%. So all financial institutions met these minimum requirements. All, that is banks, credit institutions, and MDIs met those minimums with the exception of one. And the systemic risk buffer, which is a, an additional capital requirement on uh, the bigger banks, and which ranges from 0.5% to 1%, all the domestically systemically important banks comply with their minimum. Profitability during the year, PAT, profit after tax, increased by 23.9% to 1.5 trillion for the year ending December 2023, from the 1.21 trillion registered in 2022. Key to note, much as uh, we indicated earlier on, the structural risk has actually uh, decreased. Most of this profitability was largely driven by the larger banks. And there's also been an improvement, 
slight of the return on assets for the financial institutions from 2.79 to 3.19% as of December 2023, on year-on-year basis. So our outlook or implication of this, of this, uh, of this information, of this data, is that most banks continue to maintain strong capital buffers to absorb potential shocks. However, the high operational costs and the cost of deposits continue to affect performance of some banks. The next category of risks that we're looking at is market risks. There's been relative uh, stability in the exchange rates. I know some of you might probably want to disagree with me because obviously we used to look at where the exchange rate is today and where it was perhaps a month ago. But we, as Bank of Uganda, we tend to take a long-term view. We are not focused on the immediate short-term view. So there's been relative stability in exchange rate and interest rates during the quarter. Um, all the banks may have complied with the net open position uh, requirement of plus or minus 25%. The, the local unit, the UGX, remains stable against the US dollar, despite some pressures in the, towards the end of the quarter ending December 2023. And the share of foreign currency denominated loans and deposits in the banking sector has actually reduced over the years. And that's reflected in the figure in your, the bottom left of your slides, where you will notice the, the green dotted lines are forex deposits, total deposits. The blue solid line is forex loans to total loans. And you'll note that that ratio is, has been coming down steadily over the time. So the long term trend is that it's been a downward um, a, a reduction in that component. The real estate market, which in Uganda is rather important, considering that real estate forms is the bulk of is the bulk of the collateral used within uh, for the acquisition of credit. The residential property index shows consistent positive annual growth for the last two quarters, suggesting some recovery in real estate prices. Real estate loans increased by 1.5% and currently account for almost 20% of total gross loans. And there has been even a slight improvement in the NPLs associated with the sector from 6% to 5.6% over the quarter. That's uh, from September 2023 to December 2023. The outlook is that this stability, this relative stability in the foreign exchange market and recovery in the real estate market is expected to minimize credit risk and support more lending to the private sector. Bank of Uganda maintains a prudential loan to value limit of 85% for residential mortgages and land uh, purchase loans, and this remains in place. Now let's turn to payment systems and uh, performance broadly within that sector, performance and risks. There has been a growth in the usage of digital payments. On debit, uh, debit card payments, 9.1% increase uh, in the quarter from, fire, from 50, 532 billion in uh, September 2023 to 581 billion in December 2023. Mobile banking, uh, an increase in the active number of users by 24.9%. Mobile money, volume of transactions increased by 7.7% over the quarter. And the value of transactions also increased by 2.9% to 62.2 trillion shillings as of December 2023. Again, you'll allow me to draw your attention to the figure you have on your slides in the bottom left of that slide. And take note of the, the increases, even though uh, appearing apparently slight, on mobile money, internet banking, and mobile banking. So one key deduction from this particular figure is that increasingly, financial transactions or transactions in Uganda and payments are largely moving to digital, which is something that we actually, uh, as Bank of Uganda, are pushing, uh, pushing for actively. Within the, payments, uh, within the payments ecosystem, liquidity risk was rated low in the quarter ending December. 
All electronic money is backed by funds held in trust accounts. And bank accounts held at Bank of Uganda to facilitate RTGS transactions between the banks have always remained uh, fully funded. Operational risk is moderate. If you, if you recall the last presentation we had, it was low, but it's now moderate, so there's been a slight increase. Um, that slight increase is largely because of the increased presence of so the, the number of frauds, fraud incidents within this payment ecosystem. Uh, so in terms of outlook, Bank of Uganda continues to engage the payment service providers to address fraud and enhance their cybersecurity stance and health and hygiene. We've had um, a revision to the interception of communication regulations that came into force. This is expected to mitigate uh, fraud activities with limits on the number of SIM cards an individual can own. And of course, Bank of Uganda will continue together with other st and industry stakeholders on public awareness and sensitization on the risks within uh, digital payments. An update on regulatory developments. Um, there was an amendment to the Financial Institutions Bill in 2023, um, which and in particular, the first one, which I'd like to draw everyone's attention, was the repeal of Section 115B of the Financial Institutions Act that uh, had maintained the requirement for a central Sharia advisory council at the central bank. And it was on the basis of this that Salam Bank was licensed as the first Islamic, full-fledged Islamic bank in September 2023. Uh, microfinance deposit taking institutions. There were amendments to the MDI's Act, and these largely introduced and allowed for Islamic microfinance, agent banking, bank assurance for the MDI's. And at this time, Bank of Uganda is working on the implementing, implementing regulations for uh, these amendments. The MDI Registered Societies Regulations 2022 and the supervision of large circles. If you recall, in the, money, in the Tier 4 and Money Lenders Act of 2017, uh, I believe it was Section 110, there's a requirement that large circles, those with um, capital of more than 500 million shillings or member contributions of 1.5 billion, are supposed to come under the, the remit of Bank of Uganda in terms of the supervision by Bank of Uganda. So these regulations were in effect, were to give effect to those particular amendments. So these were gazetted in June 2023. Um, however, there's been a slight stall since we, there is currently a petition in court against Bank of Uganda, the Attorney General, contesting Bank of Uganda's large circle mandate. On environmental, social, and governance, ESG supervision, Bank of Uganda is working with the Bankers Association to develop an ESG framework. On ESG, which is environmental, social, and governance, Bank of Uganda is working with the Bankers Association um, to develop an ESG framework, which covers, uh, and one of the, the things we're doing is, first of all, understanding the state of play with regards to ESG uh, stance by each of the financial institutions and the industry as a whole. The key factors or considerations we're going to take as an industry with regarding governance, sustainable finance, the management of climate change risk and environmental risk, and of course, natural reporting and disclosure on the, ES on the ESG dimension. The other regulatory development is the financial institutions liquidity regulations were updated and passed in 2023, I believe August 2023. And these are supposed to enhance the, bank, the commercial bank's ability, the way they manage liquidity. So the, the regulations incorporate some of the standards from Basel III for LCR, which is liquidity coverage ratio, and NSFR, which is the net stable funding ratio. 
and an update of the list of liquid assets reflecting the financial sector's evolution. Under these particular regulations, in addition, the financial institutions are going to be required to conduct an internal liquidity adequacy assessment on a, every two years for, to ensure that the financial institutions understand and appreciate how they are managing uh, liquidity risk and also to give us a sense in terms of their understanding and management of liquidity risk on their balance sheets. Um, and lastly, so the overall systemic risks continue to moderate during the quarter to December 2023. The banking sector remains stable and resilient to potential shocks, and this is largely underpinned by the strong capital and liquidity buffers that most of them hold. They, uh, there's an expectation, there's a projection by Bank of Uganda for uh, robust economic growth, and this was in our monetary policy statement that was issued earlier this month. And we expect it to alleviate the non-performing loans and foster bank sector lending to the private sector, as well as improve broadly profitability within the financial sector. Uh, in terms of the outlook, we ex we are, Bank of Uganda position is that over time, and based, of course, naturally based on data, there will be an easing of the monetary policy stance and exchange rate stability, I expected support more accommodative funding conditions. So the outlook is for conditions in the banking sector to, produce, uh, to improve over the financial year 2023-2024. Um, and as you're aware, with the statutory instrument that was issued in November or December 2022, the expectation is that all of the, the banks, the tier ones, will have their capital, will all meet the minimum capital buffers of uh, minimum paid up capital of 150 billion by June 2024. For the credit institutions, it will be 25 billion. And for the MDIs, it will be 5 billion shillings as minimum paid up capital by June 2024. So the policy measures and the stance taken by Bank of Uganda, and these are also reflected in the monetary policy statement that was issued last week. Uh, we have started on the implementation of the financial institutions liquidity regulations. And as I indicated, that's about enhancing the banking sector's liquidity management and funding risk management. And also ensures that financial institutions in Uganda are aligned to international best practice and international standards. Two, we are maintaining our loan-to-value ratio of 85% on residential mortgages and land purchase, meaning that uh, lending will not exceed 85% of the value of the collateral. Um, and we're also maintaining our counter-cyclical capital buffer at 0%. Uh, the counter-cyclical um, capital buffer is where we expect financial institutions during periods of... Um, significant credit growth or profitability to increase their or good economic conditions, to increase the amount of capital they are holding that later on they can draw down when economic conditions uh, turn around and become bad. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. And I think uh, Dr. Gessa will start taking questions if there are any. Thank you.